such a like heady experience like to recognize where i now fit into sort of the lore and, and the legacy of it it's as a horror fan like a real genuine horror fan and a massive fan of the original it's like i'm getting a real kick out of it to be honest with you we love <laughs> really that. it hasn't kind of sunk in yet that i'm like now a part of this world it's it's so fun guys i won't even joke we were walking like i don't even think we were hired yet and we landed in rome and it was raining and we were like man, maybe this was a mistake, you know, mm. what we're doing here and we're walking down the street and then we come across this big sign that says Satan. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Tim goes, you're kidding me. Yeah, you're <laughs> we're in the right place. your own omen <laughs> in a sense. Yeah, <laughs> yeah what's like, the behind the scenes of the making of the movie now? That's what we want to see. <laughs> man, that's the movie. <laughs> Hi, Nell. How are you doing today? I'm good. How are you? We're doing great. Thank you so much for taking your time with us today on the movie podcast. It's so great to talk to you again. We actually had a chance to speak to you for Servant uh, oh, wow. last year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and you're back in the horror world again. <laughs> Here I am, back again. Can't get rid of me. <laughs> <laughs> we love that. No, we don't. We don't want to get rid of you. In fact, we're gonna have you on the show always from now on. Yeah. That's how it's gonna go. Amazing. I'll be that whenever you need me. <laughs> love it. And congratulations on the premiere last night. That must have been such an amazing experience, dude. I'm like, wow. <laughs> It was wild. It really was wild. It felt like almost like we were like like a Rocky Horror. Like it was such an interactive audience. It was a big audience, which was amazing. Oh. Everybody's reactions were exactly what we were hoping for. So it was just a fantastic experience. I had all my friends and family with me and they were all having to clamber over and grip onto me when some of the more harrowing things were going down. I had to assure <laughs> them that I was actually there and I was okay. <laughs> Anthony and I unfortunately had to watch it with just, I think, him and I in the theater. Yeah. And so we were only holding on to each other in this giant <laughs> yeah. theater screaming for the for our lives. Clinging now, on to each other for dear life. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Now, you're getting this amazing opportunity to, to step into the world of The Omen and its long legacy of sequels. What does it mean to you now to leave your stamp on this franchise? It's amazing. It's such a, like, heady experience, like, to recognize where I now fit into sort of the lore and, and the legacy of it. It's, as a horror fan, like a real genuine horror fan and a massive fan of the original, it's like I'm getting a real kick out of it, to be honest with you. We love <laughs> really, that. it hasn't kind of sunk in yet that I'm like now a part of this world. It's it's so fun. It's so fun. It must feel like surreal too to be it is. To come so many years from the past of the future to still be part of the story. It is. It is. I never... Like when I was like 11 and like snuck over to my next door neighbor's house to watch The Omen on DVD, which I used to do all the time. She had all the best horror films and I would just sneak over and we watched all of them. It was very, very misbehaving of us. Um, but like whilst watching that as a kid, like if somebody had told me that I would like become a part of it, it was just, it's just such a, it really is. It's a trippy experience. It is. <laughs> we love it's that. so much fun. Yeah. Now, without going into spoilers, there's a pivotal scene where you step out of a car and deliver a very powerful performance. What was your mindset like as you prepared for that moment? Me and Kasha just had a lot of conversations and I she explained to me what she wanted it to achieve and what she wanted it to feel like. We didn't want it to feel gimmicky or silly or, you know, it just it just wanted it, that scene for me was like the one I was looking forward to the most and the one I was most nervous about because I I knew for Akasha, she said to me it was like the scene that she was felt needed the most. And like it, it, it was the one that she was the most an anti like anticipating the most. And I loved her and I wanted to do a good job for her and I wanted her to get what she imagined when she wrote the scene. Um, and preparation wise, we didn't have any rehearsals. Um, it wasn't choreographed. I'm not on some sort of pulley device like I've been hearing rumors about. Um, it was just, we just stood in the road and she came up and she whispered to me, you know, scare the shit out of them. Sorry for swearing, bleep me, sorry. <laughs> she, whispered that, she whispered that in my ear and I just clicked in and, and, and gave it a go. We did it in uh, two takes, which was a lot of fun. Wow. Wow. Yeah, one shot, two takes. That's actually amazing because, yeah, that, that scene was just so hard to watch because you're just really just pushing it all the way through and we're yeah. just so in love with this movie it's absolutely terrifying we're gonna have trouble sleeping for the next couple of nights maybe not anthony <laughs> good i'm gonna sleep easy <laughs> <laughs> that's, good. that's good well you know now thank you so much again for your time we obviously love this movie we hope to have you again on this show for something down the road and uh yeah we can't wait for the movie to come out as well thank you so much i'm so happy you guys enjoyed it absolutely thank you take care i'll talk to Bye. you soon see you on the next one <laughs> 
Hi, Arkashna. How are you doing today? Hey, guys. Congratulations on the premiere last night. The reactions to this movie have been so overwhelming. Thank you. I, it's, it's uh, yeah, we've been hit with a love truck and I love it. So <laughs> it's been very nice. <laughs> also, we are still very terrified from watching it. I mean, Anthony's not going to admit it because he's trying to pretend like he chooses not to, not to be scared. <laughs> I have to go to confession. You that's, do have to go to confession. That's how they'll know. Yeah. <laughs> the world of the Omen has had so many entries. We're curious for yourself. What excited you most about getting to kind of explore this world further? Well, you know what I love so much is when I got to read the script. It was all already in such a beautiful place, and it was so exciting, and had such beautiful bones. And you know, I was so surprised that it was going to be told through that point of view of this young novitiate, which wasn't what I was expecting at all. And so it really hooked me in there. And I think having such a, a fresh way in, I think, was so exciting. And knowing where we started and knowing where we ended left so much room to play, which was really, I think it's really important because, you know, by the end of the movie, you find out how Damien was born. So we got a lot of time to explore why. You really throw a lot of curveballs at us throughout this entire process that we were just like, wow, we didn't expect to go there, didn't expect to go there. So really, really awesome stuff. Thanks, man. I appreciate that. When you were writing the film, was there any like film inspiration or maybe book inspiration or religious texts that you came across that kind of helped you progress the story and kind of make it your own thing? Yeah. Well, you know, it's so that that question is so interesting because it's probably just about every movie I've ever watched in my whole life. You'll see a snippet of that in the film, but but real fast, and I'll I'll try and go quickly because I know you don't have a lot of time. But but one of the things when we started the project, I work with um, Tim Smith, is my creative partner. We went to Rome and and wanted to do research, and we were looking at a lot of religious tableaus of hell. Um, we actually first got to Rome on. Dante Aguilari's 700th and 50th anniversary of his death. So there, oh, wow. yeah, there was all these art exhibits that were dedicated to depictions of the topography of, of hell. And there was this one exhibit where you had a bunch of, of um, Bosch tableaus of like demons mutilating humans. And then on the second floor, you had, it was dedicated to artwork that was done by survivors of the Holocaust. And, um, this, I think, impacted us the most and really grounded us in the story the most because we realized that this was a, a story about humans bringing hell to Earth, which mm. almost dissipates a supernatural element, really. Like, those, the scary people in this movie are people. It's not the devil. And so looking at that that artwork was really... We kept returning to Bosch a lot. I don't know if that's, like, really good luck that you happen to be in town right when that was happening guys i won't even joke we were walking like i don't even think we were hired yet and we landed in rome and it was raining and we were like man maybe this was a mistake you know mm. what are we doing here and we're walking down the street and then we come across this big sign that says satan <laughs> <laughs> and, and tim goes you're kidding me yeah, you're <laughs> we're in the right place your own omen <laughs> yeah. in a sense yeah. <laughs> yeah, what's like, the behind the scenes of the making of the movie now that's what we want to see man that's the movie <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're able to to capture that that 70s aesthetic of the original Omen movie so well, just with the long shots and the zooms. You know, what was it like to really find that look? It was really important to us to make it feel like if you watched a double feature with the original Omen, that maybe they were shot during the same period. Um, and so, you know, one of the things that I love about the 76 Omen is that it's um, it's not hyper stylized. It's really about the characters and about the character development and the drama between Gregory Peck and Lee Remick. And so so staying a bit quiet with the camera was important, um, at least starting, and so that you could create a journey. And then the camera can start to become more stylized as she feels like this force is overtaking her. Um, but but that was um, a big inspiration was Clute. I think also a lot of it was pacing, like trying to pace out the movie and go slow and get to know the characters. And so we looked a lot to Clute and kind of the creation of Jane Fonda's character in that movie. How much time you you get to take with her to really appreciate the complexities of her internal landscape. Yeah, no, yeah. definitely. It's very, yeah, it's obvious there. Yeah. Yeah. The, uh, the ending of this movie opens the door to a lot of possibilities. Where are you hoping to explore the story for the Omen's future? Yeah, that's a great question that I don't have a great answer to because I could go 
I could go backwards, I could go forwards, you know, I could go sideways. It's really interesting because, um, you know, the big question is, is where did Damien come from, right? And once you get that answer at the end of the film, you think you'd be satisfied. But for me as an Omen fan, I had a million more questions, you know? And also I had fallen in love with Margaret and these girls. I wanted to see how they progressed in the world. But I also am very curious about the jackal and about this, you know, this conspiracy within the church and how that started and continue to explore those motivations, which would push us back in time. So I want to go this way. <laughs> that's, that's a good way to go. Because again, yeah, like you mentioned, there's so many different areas that you can explore. And that's what excited us most about the ending of this movie that obviously getting into spoilers. We we're just like, wow we're left with a lot more questions, but in such a good way. Thank you. For sure. <laughs> We've talked about how you fought really hard to get an R rating for the first Omen. How different would you say the final film is from the original script? Not that different, actually, to be totally honest. You know, I think from the get go, um, everybody involved was really excited about subverting expectations. I think when you get into an Omen prequel, you assume it's going to be a creepy kid movie. And then you fall in love with the main character and realize that this is her journey. And um, especially when Nell Tiger Free came on board, that just locked and loaded it, you know? She's she's amazing. And um, it, was, it was really exciting getting to explore this story with her. Absolutely. Yeah. She really brought this very likable persona to the character that you're kind of just always wondering, like, I really hope nothing bad happens to her. I really hope nothing bad happens to her. And the entire time you're just rooting for her. So yeah, I, I agree with you. Nell Tiger is just phenomenal in this movie. She's a tiger. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what, what are you, what are you really hoping that, like, what is the, the fear that you're hoping that audiences kind of take away from this? Like, have you kind of shown it to anybody that, you know, your friends or family and wh how have they reacted to the to the horror of it all? Yeah, well, our our moms are are overjoyed, and which is so like that's the biggest thing for me, which is so nice. But I think what was really exciting is and which I hope that people walk away with is I think um, body horror kind of reconnects me to my own body. And I hope that does that for other people. And I hope that that there's there's a humanizing aspect in body horror i think if if you do it with love and um and that was something i think it's really nice to feel grounded and in your body especially nowadays when everything's virtual you know i think it's um i don't know i don't know if that's a real answer but <laughs> no that's that's perfect yeah. i love that you, that you touch upon that because you're right when you you've spoken about body horror before you, you have a way of, you know, humanizing that moment instead of going for a shock. You're really just trying to show this is a fact. This is what's happening here. And the movie does a phenomenal job of that. I like I grew up on horror and I love horror and I love body horror, especially. I think that um, there because it's so upsetting to look at, there is an impulse to to kind of glorify it or fetishize it a bit. Mm -hmm. um, and that was something we were trying to check ourselves on with this movie is is to make it hard to look at, even when shooting it, to keep it keep it human and make it hurt. Well, Akasha, thank you so much for your time. We really hope we get to talk to you in the future. And we're so excited for this movie to come out and for people to be scared once again to go to church, I guess, is what the, <laughs> the goal is with the movie. Isn't that the goal of yeah. church though? <laughs> yeah. Especially. <laughs> well, thank you so much. And we hope we can talk to you again soon. Oh, thanks you guys. Thanks for the love.